My name's Emily Johnson. I'm a district vet with LLS in Cowra. Worms are going to continue to be a problem for us through winter. So even though we've got a lot of stock going out onto crops at present, uh, which offer a really good low worm risk paddock option for producers, we need to be really mindful about what's happening on the other paddocks on farm, uh, particularly those that have been heavily contaminated with worms over summer and autumn. A common misconception is that frost will kill Barber's pole worm. So while the temperatures are now too cold for the eggs to hatch, anything that has already been deposited on our paddocks can sit there for several months. Uh, so a conservative rule in our region is that th it takes three months in our hottest months and six months in our coldest months for a paddock to be considered clean and for all these larvae to die. So this means paddocks that have been heavily contaminated through autumn, the larvae that have already been deposited on the paddock will sit there uh, possibly into spring, which is a concern and something we need to be mindful of. So worm testing is the key. So make sure you do a worm test so you know what the worm burden is in your sheep. And I'd really encourage producers to spend the extra dollars on doing a larval culture so we know what type of worms we're dealing with. So even though we've battled with Barber's pole worm over summer and into autumn, and this is something that we need to continue to be mindful of, we also need to remember the other problem worm for sheep in our area, and that's our scour worms, and they tend to peak for us in winter. So it's really important that we know the type of worms uh, that are in our sheep so we can properly target them with appropriate drenches and management strategies. It's really important that hungry stock should never be given access to a crop for the first time. So just make sure they've got a full belly before you introduce them to the crop. It's also really important that we remember that it takes time for animals to adapt to any new type of feed. So it takes time to the, for them to get used to eating it and also time for their rumen to adapt. So this can be up to a couple of weeks depending on the, the crop. Uh, and while it would be in an ideal world, farmers would put them onto the crop for a few hours every day for a couple of weeks. For most producers, this just really is not practical advice. So even offering uh, access to a neighbouring pasture paddock or just feeding good quality hay for a couple of weeks until they've had a chance to adapt to the crop. Uh, the other really important uh, thing farmers need to be aware of is pulpy kidney is a risk when livestock are grazing any lush feed type. So making sure those clostridial vaccinations are up to date and be mindful that in high risk conditions, these may need to be boosted every three months. Grazing cereal crops, like our wheat crops and our oat crops, are low in calcium and magnesium. So it's really important for pregnant, lactating and young stock that we supplement these minerals. The easiest way to supplement them is in a loose lick containing salt. All of our grazing crops are really high in energy and protein, which is fantastic for production, but they are low in fibre and it's essential that we provide fibre to our stock on these crops. So this needs to be provided in the form of hay and the hay needs to be a good enough quality that the stock will actually want to eat it. Grazing any crop is not a set and forget system and it's really important that the stock are closely monitored. Uh, if there's any issues, if the stock are showing any unusual signs and particularly if there's any deaths, that's when you can contact any of your district vets.